Hello everybody, I hope you all are doing well. And this message is for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering right now, who are in a season of waiting on God through the pain and the suffering. And I just want to share truth through the word of God to you to encourage you, to help you stay the course and know that you are okay while you wait on God, that you are securely in his hands. For many of you, and I felt this way too, that's why I want to say this and people I, I talk to, uh, while you are waiting on God, and of course I'm assuming you guys are children of God, the suffering is so intense and so long that you sometimes feel like God's not for you. You get confused, like, is God even with me anymore? Like I've done so much wrong where I went the wrong way too long and uh, because of my sins, is God no longer with me? And I want to assure you and reaffirm that the Word of God says that He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's always with us. And that is the truth. No matter how you feel, you have to remember that. Always know that God is for His children. And through the discipline, through the good times and bad times, He is always with us and will see us through. And I want to share uh, from Psalm 142 and 143. Uh, to give you an example of waiting for God and maybe you think that God is not with you anymore. And um, David wrote these psalms while he was actually in the cave, while, most likely when he was hiding from Saul and he was taking shelter in caves and different places and he was being hunted for many years. And he cried out to God many times throughout those years, but God did not deliver him you know, immediately. And many of those times he cried out to God. And so this shows us that when we cry out to God, he hears us, but he often or sometimes will not answer us and rescue us at that moment. As we see with David, who was a faithful servant of God. Um, an anointed servant of God. And even though he cried out to God many times, God told him, wait. Uh, it was for many years and it was for his good to train him to be uh, the king of Israel. So here are some of his words that he spoke. In Psalm 142 verse 4, Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. A lot of us feel that way during this time. You feel like no one cares for you. And even if you have loved ones around you, no one can understand how to care for your soul because you don't even understand how to care for your soul. And so in verse five, it says, I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. Bring my soul out of prison. He's not saying bring me out of this cave. He's saying bring my soul out of this prison. Being on the run, these circumstances can cause you to feel like you're in prison in the inside. And anxiety, depression, all that, the panic can make you feel that way. And he's saying, God... Bring me out of this prison so I may praise your name. I hope you can say that too. Lord, this season in my life is difficult. Bring me out of this time of suffering in this prison so I may give you glory, worship you, and enjoy you and praise you. For that day is surely coming for those who trust in him and that belong to him. So be like David here and it's okay to cry out to God saying, please save me so I may worship you. Now moving on to Psalm 143, verse 3 and 4. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has, he has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. He is telling these realities to God. God knows, but God is pleased with this as he has included in the word of God. And I believe to let us know that we are not alone when we feel this way. Even David felt this way and he expressed it to God. Verse seven, answer me speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. 
Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. He's saying, God, do not delay speedily. Help me, answer me, Lord. He's a man like us. Saying, God, help me quickly. It hurts a lot. My spirit fails. And I want you to realize in verse 8, he says, cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. It's because he needs help. We need help. And sometimes we just can't do it. So to say, God, you cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For you do I trust. Our job is only to trust and he will cause us to do the right things. And for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. For I lift up my soul to you. Again, he's saying, God, cause me to do what is right, to do, to know the way in which I should walk. And so I should say, he doesn't make us do the right thing, but he shows us how to do the right thing. And that's the better wording. And I want you to notice here at the end of that, he says, for I lift up my soul to you. When we lift up our soul to him, we're surrendering ourselves to him, saying, God, have your way with me. Then cause me to know the way in which I should walk. And so he's the one who causes us to be able to do what is right, to be able to do his will as we lift up our souls to him. And verse 9 and 10, Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. We have to rely on him to do it all for us as we surrender and trust in him, as we cry out to him and saying, God, answer me speedily, O Lord, and telling him honestly and plainly that I feel crushed, like my life is being crushed into the ground, that I am being forced to dwell in darkness right now. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. Express this to God as David did and be honest with him. Guys, I want you to be encouraged by this example of how David prayed during his many years of affliction. The answers from God did not come instantly whenever he just asked sometimes. Sometimes God answered him as soon as he asked, but many times, as we could see in all the Psalms that he wrote, he desperately cried out to God many times, and it's okay for you to do that too. But I want you to know, that God will deal bountifully with his children who trust in him as he did with David. This is just one season in your life. And I want to also address one thing that many people are struggling with too. Um, You know, when David made a lot of these Psalms, he was surrendered to him and totally at God's mercy. And that's where we should be as well. And that is the answer to coming out of this trial uh, for many of you that God is allowing you to go through this so that you may learn to surrender, trust, and rest in Him not only through this trial but throughout your entire life. And what a lot of people are doing that I see, I don't know if it's a lot, but I see some people saying, look, Aaron, I surrender to God. I'm trusting it, but I'm not feeling any better. That's normal for many of us. But the bad thing the worst thing you can do is to turn away from that and try other things. Because the thing is, a lot of people do not get healed instantly when they surrender and trust in God. When David was surrendering and trusting in God through his trial of being on the run from Saul, um, he didn't say, okay, I surrendered and now I don't feel better, so I'm going to abandon this method and I'm I'm now going to pick up maybe more training in the sword to be able to kill Saul myself. No, he didn't do any of that. He kept on surrendering and trusting and resting in God. He kept on crying out to God and waiting on Him and trusting in Him. And so when you guys surrender, trust, and rest in God, you must give it time. And for many of you who are going through mental afflictions, and I said this before and I was taught by this from Grace Fellowship International from Dr. Woodward, is that um, the reason why a lot of you, when you really surrender to God, you don't feel instantly better your emotions is because it takes time for your emotions to catch up with the truth that is now in your head and now into your heart. And so it takes time for your body, even physically, to catch up in your emotions. And the example that was given was a man that's being chased in the 
in the forest by like a wild animal like a bear he's running and he thinks that he might get killed you know mauled by this huge stronger bear and so his heart is pumping his he's like panicking he's fearful anxiety is probably at maximum but once he finds that safe cabin he enters locks it closes the door and he knows that he's completely secure even though he knows it now completely his body is still panicked he will still feel his heart pumping hard his anxiety will still be very high he's not able to just go down and read a book and relax drinking a tea at that time he is very uh, emotionally unstable still because he was being chased by a bear and this is the same for many of you you have been harassed by the devil giving you these fearful thoughts um, focusing your attention on everything and everyone but God but now as you focus your attention on God and his word and his promises and you surrender yourself completely to him it is only a matter of time before your emotions catch up and then when you take away all of these um, fearful evil thoughts that cause anxiety it's amazing what how your body responds to so just so many things are just healed you know just God allows that healing to go on in your body like for my chest pain I didn't know what that was I felt like um it was just so painful it went away on its own as I just surrendered and trusted in God the sleep came back as I stopped caring on what happens to me but offering my body as a living sacrifice to God and giving him all consequences to him, letting him handle it all. The peace of God just went through my body, not very quickly, but over a few months and healed me. It was actually three months for me. It's different for uh, everybody else, but it just brought me back to complete healing and a uh, much better faith and trusting in God than I did before. So don't give up on surrendering, trusting, and resting in God, but stay in that position. Like what David here, this is just one example from two chapters on him surrendering, trusting, and resting in God, just relying on him, crying out to God and holding on, looking forward to that day when God would rescue him so that he may be able to praise his name. And um, yeah, don't, don't fall for the trick of thinking it needs to be done right now. Instead, surrender that timeline to God and wait on Him. He is working. You just have to wait it out. And um, while you're waiting, He's working on you. This is like needed um, building up of you in order for Him to do His work. Just like David had to go through that difficult trial to build him up to become debatably the beta, uh, best king ever, you know, in my opinion, on earth, you know, next to God, um, or at least uh, for Israel. So what I'm saying is, there was great purpose for his sufferings and there's great purpose for your sufferings. You just need to wait on God and let him do his thing in you. In the meantime, give all the anxieties to him, all your worries, stay surrendered and have childlike faith and that will bring you peace even though it hurts. And just give it time as your body um, reacts to the truth that you are holding on to and that's God's promises and truth. God bless you.